Hello, and welcome to a Grim Oak Press unboxing. This, my friends, is Tail Chaser Song by Tad Williams, a signed limited edition of Williams' first novel, back from 1985, I believe, as well as the optional slipcase, because if you're buying a Grim Oak Press title, you should really be buying the optional slipcase, because they are gorgeous. So... It's always a nice touch, and you always want to pre-order the slipcases early. Uh, and one, if you buy it, if you order the slipcase while you're buying the book, you save on shipping because it'll ship together like so. And two, it locks in a slipcase for you because there have been instances of previous titles where they only order uh, just enough slipcases for what was pre-ordered, plus a couple extra. But then some people who get on the train late uh, miss out. But if that's ever the case and you're saying, oh, crap, they're out of slipcases, uh, do reach out to Becky Lawson uh, at Grim Oak Press, and she will do her darndest to hook you up. So anyways, this, my friends, is Tail Chaser Song. I'm loving the stamping on the slipcase, the name on the spine there, Grim Oak Press, the incredible dust jacket artwork by Stephanie Law. She... I, I was not familiar with Stephanie Law prior to, oh, wow, prior to this. But her watercolor artwork is stunning. There's Freddy, a.k.a. Tail Chaser. Freddy Tail Chaser. With his little star on his forehead. So this Tail Chaser song is Tad Williams' only novel in this world. This almost realistic world where... Uh, the world is told from the animal's point of view, from the cats, the folk. A uh, beautiful bonded leather cover. Wow. Nice white bonded leather. But look at the stamping on that. That is gorgeous. Uh, we don't have any uh, gilding on the edges, but that is fine. The book is stunning. Beautiful end papers. Holy crap. And the signature page up front, uh, number 86, to match many of my other Grim Oak titles, signed by Tad Williams and Stephanie Law. Wow, that is beautiful. Move the slipcase out of the way real quick so I can open this fully without fear of smacking into it. So there is uh, Tail Chaser and presumably Hush Pad. He's probably with Hush Pad, yep. There's Hush, he's still with Hush Pad at this point. Uh, so the story of Tail Chaser's song opens up with a little Silmar Silmarillion world building. It's a mythology into the world of the cats, the folk, and the, the man, or Ma'an, uh, Mirslar Allmother. I know it says Mirklar, but they, they mentioned that the C's are pronounced like S's. Uh, it has this very... Very, I mean, it's only a few pages, but very kind of uh, detailed introduction into the world and the mythology within it before we're even introduced to uh, Tail Chaser. So Tail Chaser is a cat. He's a little orange tabby. He's got a, the marking of a star on his forehead. And he, he uh, is good friends with his, his female cat friend, Hushpad. But when Hushpad goes missing, uh, Tail Chaser and Pounce Quick, young, inexperienced Pounce Quick, uh, decide to go searching for Hushpad. And uh, they're soon joined by Eatbugs, who is this potentially really kind of crazy cat. And uh, they encounter... Other species, I mean, they, they do encounter dog. They encounter squirrels, which have their own language. Yep, there's the squirrels there. They encounter uh, actual mythological evil, evil cats. And they kind of just, they discover that this world, this mythological world, there are these uh, mythological beings of heaven and hell. And, well, it's not really heaven and hell, but the cat equivalent of it. Um, uh, you have... Heart Eater, Grizzraz Heart Eater, who's kind of like an evil, evil cat. I realize that there's some truth to their mythology. 
So, I mean, this takes place in the real world. But it's all from the point of view of these, uh, these cats and their society. And there's a lot of world building within it. There's a lot of songs, a lot of poems. Uh, they use higher singing for their songs. And there's a lot of songs. And uh, I'm not going to lie, he, uh, he likes his dashes. So many dashes. I read this last year. Not that there's anything wrong with dashes, but he, he sprinkles that in like he's salt in his plate. But, uh, dash! Dash! So many dashes. But it's, it's very well written. Especially for his, uh, for his very first novel. Each chapter begins with a little quote. And, uh, yeah. This is the only... He, I mean, he left it open where if he wanted to build more upon this world, he could. But it's been 37 years since it was published, and he has not gone back to this world. Uh, he's gone from this to the Dragonbone Chair, which, by the way, Grimoke Press is doing. Copies of Tail Chaser's Song are still available, but copies for the Dragonbone Chair are also available for pre-order. That has not come out yet. That has artwork from uh, Donato Giancarlo, which I am very excited for. Love Donato's artwork. I mean, I love Stephanie Law's artwork, too. This is very nicely done, very nicely made. Nice little uh, fantasy title, but that's exactly what you're going to get with Grim Oak Press. They do fantasy right. I mean, I'm not saying, like, other publishers do not do fantasy right. I mean, Subterranean Press does one hell of a job as well. Um, but a lot, of other, a lot of other publishers kind of focus on different genres. Uh, Subterranean Press does a lot of science fiction. They do fantasy as well, but a lot of, a lot of science fiction. Suntup touches upon some science fiction with some classics, like Heinlein, but mostly focuses on horror. Cemetery Dance mostly focuses on horror, a.k.a. Stephen King. <laughs> and... Uh, Centipede Press focuses on a lot of weird fiction, but they do a lot of good fantasy as well, especially with the Elric series. But, anyways, I'm just I'm just kind of rambling. Various other small press publishers, but uh, Grim Oak Press, Sean Speakman's Grim Oak Press, does fantasy very well, and they are pretty much exclusively fantasy. They do kind of dabble into some science fiction, uh, especially with uh, Tempered Steel, Antiquity Gray which is the book by uh, Speaking of Himself, as well as Street Freaks, Terry Brooks. But they uh, they dabble, but they do one hell of a fantasy title. Uh, so, yeah, copies are still available. It's a very nice production. Holy crap. Uh, I mean, I read, the, I read the book last year in preparation for this, because I, I had not actually read any Tad Williams prior. And uh, it was a good introduction before jumping into Austin Ard uh, and Dragonbone Share, which... Uh, was phenomenal, and I can't wait to see what they do with that. Uh, but Grimoke is publishing a lot of other great titles. Uh, most recently, they've kind of been using Kickstarter for various titles for Terry Brooks, the, Sci the Scions of Shannara. Um, so that Kickstarter is done, but you can buy copies uh, because I presume there are going to be some copies left over once that is completed. Same thing with Digger Unearthed, uh, Ursula Vernon's graphic novel. Uh, which is going to be introduced by Patrick Rothfuss. So uh, there's a lot of Kickstarters going on, but they've all ended. But be sure to check out Grim Oak Press to see what they're doing next. They do have a lot of great titles available on their site. They're going to be doing some John Gwynn going forward, uh, some Patricia Briggs. Uh, they're doing some more Peter B. Brett, which I am all for. Anyways, I'm just rambling now. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to check out Grim Oak Press. Check out Ted Williams' work and Stephanie Law's beautiful watercolor artwork. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you around next time.